Turning out of holiday shopping, that's enough to make your head spin. From the Xbox One to the iPad Air to the Galaxy S4, the range of tablets, consoles, and smartphones out there is bewildering. And who better to help sort out your Android from your Ouya than the man who just might have the best job at the Boston Globe? Mm -hmm. Hiawatha Bray is here. Hey. I don't even know what an Ouya is, but mm -hmm. anyway... We'll start kind of in order of stuff. There's, yeah. It seems that the big gift this season are these uh, game consoles. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. They've been around for a while, though. Why are they hot now? Well, there's pent-up demand. I mean, you have to understand that while you see new computers and new phones coming out on a, not as the annual, almost monthly basis, the major video game console machines, let's see, the Xbox 360 is eight years old now. I know, it's mm -hmm. almost shocking. The PlayStation 3 is seven years old. Computer technology has just been completely transformed in that time. It's time for a refresher. Now, Nintendo tried to beat everybody to the punch. They came out with theirs last year. It was called the Wii U. Mm -hmm. It died like a dog. Mm -hmm. Everybody was terrified. They've only sold about a little under 4 million units worldwide since it came out, which is nothing. And everybody is really worried going, oh, well, what about when the Xbox hits or the PlayStation hits? Is that going to be a, a similar flop? So far, there's no sign of it. They both seem to be doing very, and very well. For a, a wide range of ages? It's not just... Well, it depends. For anybody who likes to play games, yeah. absolutely. Although, of course, everybody is talking about the huge, important difference in almost the philosophy behind the PlayStation 4 and the, the new Xbox, which is called the Xbox One. The PlayStation 4, and Sony is proud of this, is a we build a machine for gamers. It's for gamers. It's mainly for playing games. Yes, you can stream video like Netflix into your TV, but primarily this is a machine for people who want to play Killzone <laughs> and Battlefield 4 and all that kind of stuff. Right. Now, Microsoft is taking in a different approach, and they've been wanting to do this for years. They want to create a home entertainment center. They want to be the central box in your home that controls all your entertainment. You don't just play this game. You know how if you have a traditional game console, you're playing the game, yeah, yeah. then it's time to watch, watch TV. TV yeah. You have to switch unhook. the input. You don't have to unhook anything, but you have to change the input yeah, yeah, button yeah. and say, take me from the game box to the TV. You don't do it with the Xbox yeah. One. You just tell the Xbox, I want to watch TV now. And you can even like do it verbally. <laughs> you can say, Xbox, watch TV. And All right, pow, so your what TV is this Ouya thing that I mentioned? Oh, Ouya <laughs> is a very interesting pr approach that's just starting to come out in the last year, which is the idea that people shouldn't have to spend this much money to play games. PS4 costs $400. Xbox costs $500. Ouya costs $99. But it doesn't play the kinds of super powerful mm. high-end games people are playing on these other consoles. So why would anybody want them? Simple. Millions, billions of people all over the world are now playing games, cheap, simple games on their phones. The Ouya is basically designed for those kinds of games to be played on your TV set. It's, it's $99. You download the games off the network. Some of them are free. Many of them cost 2 or $3. Mm. And you just sit there and play simple games on your TV. And there is a theory that this is going to find a very substantial market niche. Time will tell. I think they very well may be onto something. All right. What do we got uh, new coming on in tablets and stuff like that? Oh, well, it's the usual stuff. I mean, we've all seen, you know, the, uh, the iPad Air and, and, and no, the I iPad Mini. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, they're excellent products. The, the seen, usual yeah. excellence from Microsoft. Microsoft, much lighter, much thinner products with the very sharp screens. The problem, in a way, for Microsoft, though, is the same thing that happened to them in phones. In fact, it may be happening even more dramatically in tablets. Their market share is plummeting worldwide because all of a sudden there are lots of non-Apple tablets out there that are quite good and are usually cheaper. Like you have the Google uh, Nexus 7 tablet, which I like a lot. It's like a $230 tablet. Really very nice piece of hardware. Amazon is really coming up with something interesting. The first Kindle Fire tablet that they came out with, it was pretty good, but it had a lousy screen quality. I wasn't wild about it. The ones they got now are gorgeous. Screen quality is excellent, cheaper than the similarly sized iPad, and they've come up with an idea that ought, if we live in a sane and rational world, to completely change the way they do customer service for any electronic product. You know about Mayday, right? It is just brilliant. You take the tablet, there's a life preserver icon on it. You've got an electronic device, you're always having problems. Yeah. How do I do this? How do I do that? If you've got this thing hooked up to yeah. the internet, you're good, because you touch this thing that says Mayday, and a video window pops up with a human being in it. It says, oh, hi, that's good. welcome to Mayday. What can I help you fix? I don't know about calling it Mayday, but I like the idea. It, right there, right, let me live, ask you something. a human being. Why didn't stuff like the 3D TV and the real high-def TVs, how come they haven't caught on? Because that was supposed to be the next hot thing. Well, we've got to keep them separate. 3D TV 
has flopped utterly. It just is, hasn't caught on. Even channels that they had on TV to show 3D, they're taking them off. Simple. Nobody wants to watch it. They don't want to sit there with those glasses on, and there's nothing about watching a show in 3D. Most shows are not any better when you look at them in 3D. A few, like, event movie type mm -hmm. things are okay. Most of the time, most stuff just isn't any better on 3D, so who cares? Ultra high definition is a different story. That hasn't flopped, because that's just now coming to market. This is the first year. I was shocked. I was at a, at a Best Buy today. You can now get, the, the, it's all usually, they are described as 4K. That's the term you'll hear usually described to these new kinds of TVs. They're called 4K. You can get 4K TV sets for $3,000 now. I was shocked. They are running the prices into the yeah. ground. And the reason, of course, is the TV sales worldwide are actually down. And they're desperately looking for something to get people to buy more TVs. So they're selling these high-definition 4K sets, and they are gorgeous. There's just one big problem. There's nothing to look at. <laughs> Remember in the early days of HD TV, you had to wait until they started yeah. showing everything in HD. Very little, in fact, almost no programming is in 4K yet. But the sets, if they show you the demo, they have their own demo videos to show you of a pure 4K image, it's gorgeous. All right. And it's going to catch on once the, uh, if there are shows that are done in it, because it's really beautiful. Some gift-giving ideas from Hiawatha Bray. Thanks so much. You're welcome.